العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Yesterday we talked about the concept of muhasaba, holding yourself accountable. And we mentioned that self-accountability has three pillars. The first, as I mentioned yesterday, antuqayis bayna ni'matullahi alayk wa jinayatik alayk wa hina idhin tadhara laka haqiqatun nafs is to compare the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you and the infractions or the acts of disobedience that you do to him and at that moment it will become clear to you the reality of your soul whether you're grateful or you're ungrateful look at the blessings the many blessings that Allah has given you and look at what you have done in return for those blessings of acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Number two, and to kayas bayna hasanatik wa sayyatik wa hina idhin ta'lam ayyahuma akthar wa arjah sifatan indak. Number two is to compare your hasanat, your good deeds, to your sayyat, to your bad deeds. Compare your hasanat to your sayyat. Compare your good deeds to your bad deeds. And at that moment, it will become clear to you which of those two are, you are mostly described with. If your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds, then it's you know, quite safe to say that you're probably a bad person. And if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, or you know, if you did this on a daily basis, if you said, today I committed more sin than I did hasanat, if I didn't do any hasanat today, but yet, I did say, yeah, I did evil deeds today. Then it's safe to say that that was not a good day for you. That that is not a good day for you. One of the scholars of the past, Maymun ibn Mihran, he said, لا يكون العبد تقيا حتى يكون لنفسه أشد محاسبة من الشريك على شريكه ولهذا قيل أن النفس كالشريك خوان إن لم تحاسبه ذهب بمالك ميمون بن مهران one of the scholars of the past he said لا يكون العبد تقيا he said that the servant will never be تقي will never be righteous حتى يكون لنفسه until he is more أشد محاسبة until he holds himself accountable more then an employer would hold his employee accountable. If you all, here we go talking business again, right? Talking the language of the dunya, right? And you'll find that scholars, they'll make references to the dunya, seeing as though people have more of an affinity to the dunya than they do to the deen. So therefore, metaphors are given in terms of dunya because that's the language that most of the people speak. He said that you will never reach the level of taqi, of being righteous, until you are a shaddu muhasaba, until you are more diligent with yourself and holding yourself accountable than an employer would do with his employee. <coughs> if you had an employer, uh, if you were an employer and someone was working for you, counting your money, you are watching him as he counts your money. A shaddu muhasaba, holding him accountable. He said, and this is why it is said about the soul. That the soul, a nafs kashirik, the soul is like an employee. A soul is like an employee. Khawan, it will deceive you. If you don't watch over it, malik. If you do not hold it accountable and watch over it, it's gonna run away with all of your money. And subhanAllah, look at the soul. The soul is where your money is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the body, the physical body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا ينظر إلى سوركم ولا إلى أجسامكم لكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu said, doesn't look at your physical makeup, your bodies, your physical features. It's not the physical that Allah is concerned with. لكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم but Allah looks at your heart and your deeds. Look at your heart and your deeds. 
So he said that the nafs kashirik, that the soul is like an employee. In lam tuhasibahu malik. That if you do not hold it accountable, it will run away with all of your money. And subhanAllah, this is exactly what happens with the soul. Maktubun fi Ali Dawood. Hakun al aqil and la yakfil an arba'i sa'at. That it was written in some of the wisdoms of Dawood from the stories that were passed down generation by generation by religious people. That the aqil, that the intelligent person should not be negligent of four moments in his day. Your day should have four moments in it. Number one, sa'atun yunaji fiha rabba. There should be a moment in your day where you call on your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where you just make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, throughout the day, the best time to make dua is right before the sun sets, before maghrib. Right before the sun sets because this is the time when the angels that were with you from the previous day, they leave you and the angels that are going to come and stay with you for the remaining day, that is when they come. After Salat al-Asr, before Maghrib. And this is the best time to make dua. Sa'atun yunaji fiha rabba. A moment in your day when you call on your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sa'atun yuhasib fiha nafsa. And a moment throughout your day where you hold yourself accountable. Where you say to yourself, I could have did better today. And this most of the time is done when you lay your head down on your pillow before you go to sleep at night. And you think about all of the good deeds that you let pass you by today. All of the people that you could have gave salams to that you walked by and didn't give salams to. All of the people's hands that you could have shaken their hands but you didn't. You said, Salaamu Alaikum. You put your hand on your chest, Salaamu Alaikum. And you could have just walked over to the individual and shook his hand. The Prophet ﷺ said that when a Muslim meets another Muslim, or you saw fihuhu, then you shake his hand. That when you meet a Muslim and you shake his hand, the sins fall from your hand just like the leaves fall from a tree. But instead of walking over and shaking his hand, you said, Salaam Alaikum, and you put your hand on your chest. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, you forfeited that opportunity. To smile in the face of your brother would have been a sadaqah, but instead of smiling, you allow whatever weight you was carrying on your shoulders from the day or the day before, the argument you had with your wife, or the argument that you had with your husband, or the argument you had with a friend, or whatever happened at your job, you allow those things to interfere with your hasanat. So instead of smiling in your face of your brother, which the Prophet said is a sadaqah, you frown in the face of your brother. Instead of saying something nice about your brother, mashallah, nice though, mashallah, nice this, mashallah, every time I see you, you have a bright face, you have a, you know, illuminating face. Instead of saying something nice to your brother, you back bitch your brother. Forfeited that opportunity. So you sit down at night with yourself. Sa'atun yuhasib fiha nafsa. That there should be a moment in your day where you hold yourself accountable. Where you say to yourself, all of these opportunities passed you by today. Hopefully tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, you have a better day. وَسَاعَةٌ فِيهَا يَخْلُو فِيهَا مَعَ إِخْوَتِهِ الَّذِينَ يُخْبِرُونَ يُخْبِرُونَهُ بِعُيُوبِهِ وَيَصْدِقُونَهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ And it should be a moment in your day where you mix with your brothers in Islam. يُخْبِرُونَكَ عَنْ عُيُوبِكَ and they will inform you of your flaws and your mistakes. A moment in your day where you sit with people who tell you about yourself. But today, we are so sensitive that we can't accept constructive criticism when people come to us. It's always, well, you gotta watch the way you say things to me. Or you gotta watch the way you do this with me. You gotta, it's always something. The fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter how a person came to you, you're still not gonna accept it because you see yourself to be greater than and anytime someone comes to you with something about yourself is going to be offensive. And this is the time that we're living in. We live in a very superficial time. Technology has stolen those rare opportunities, those emotional, those intimate opportunities that we used to have with one another. We are trying to communicate love and emotion through 140 characters. Through emojis. You're trying to communicate that you love someone through an emoji through technology, through 140 characters. How can you communicate an emotion 
There was a time when you would go to someone and say, I love you. And now we just send an emoji with that's in the shape of a heart to say, communicate basically, I love you. Instead of picking up the phone and saying that I love you. Instead of going to the person and saying I love you. Instead of going to the person and say, you know, I have a problem with you. We'll send an emoji with an angry face with flames coming off the face to show you that I'm angry or upset with you. SubhanAllah al How do you communicate a human emotion through technology? And this is what is stealing that intimate connection between us as human beings. But you should have a moment in your day where you sit with people, your brothers, because your brothers are the only ones, the people that love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the only ones that are going to tell you about yourself and tell you about your flaws and your mistakes, while others will allow you to continue making mistakes because you become the hilarity of their conversations. They can sit back and backbite you and talk about you because of the sins and the mistakes that you make and the people that truly love you are the ones that are going to come and pull your coat and tell you about yourself. And lastly, وَسَاعَتُمْ وَسَاعَتُمْ يَتَخَلَّ فِيهَا بَيْنَ نَفْسِي وَبَيْنَ لَذَّاتِهِ فِي مَا يَحِلُّ وَيُجْمَلُ فَإِنَّ فِي هَذِهِ السَّاعَةَ عَوْنًا عَلَى تِلْكِ السَّاعَاتِ إِجْمَالًا لِلْقُلُوبِ and the last moment that you should have in your day is a moment where you let yourself go and enjoy your own pleasures. And of course, that is within the realms of what is halal. You enjoy your pleasures. If your hobby is reading, if your hobby is sipping coffee or tea, if your hobby is meeting with family members or friends and just sitting down talking, leisure time to take advantage of that. He said, because this moment is what will assist you in the other moments. There has to be a time where you enjoy leisure the Prophet ﷺ entered into the masjid and the Sahaba were wrestling in the masjid. So Abu Bakr went to go stop them. The Prophet ﷺ said, Da'ahum! al-Yahuda wa nasara anna fi dinina fusha. He said, no, leave them. Let them play. He said, so the Jews and Christians understand that in our religion we have leisure time. It's not all about memorizing Qur'an. It's not always about dhikr of Allah. But it's about sometimes having leisure, moments of leisure where you can enjoy yourself because that will assist you in being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you don't yamil, so you do not become tired and give up. It's not always about work, 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 spirituality all the time. The Prophet sallallahu instructed his companions to have a balance. One of his companions, three of his companions came to his home and asked about his worship. And when Aisha informed them about how meager his worship was, they said, Wallahi, one of them said, Wallahi, I will, I, will, I will stand up all night in prayer and never sleep. The other one said that I will fast all day and never break my fast. And the other one said, I'm going to refrain from getting married. And I'm going to devote all of my time for worship and an attempt to outdo what the Prophet ﷺ did. When the Prophet found out that this was their comment, he went to them and he said, Are you the ones who said such and such? He said, Wallahi, I fast, I break my fast. I sleep part of the night and I pray part of the night. And I marry. And I get married. So this moderation is from my sunnah. And whoever turns away from being moderate in his deen, then he is not part of my sunnah. He is not part of my believers. This is not part of our deen. Our deen is to take a middle course. To find a middle course and not to be extreme. But being muhasib, being muhasib ala nafs and holding yourself accountable. And I'll end with the statement of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala. Qal al-Marwazi, dakhaltu ala Ahmed ibn Hanbal, faqultu kayfa asbahta. Faqala kayfa asbaha man rabbuhu yutalibuhu bi adaa al-fara'id. Wal nabiyuhu yutalibuhu bi adaa al-sunnah. Wal malak al-mawt, wal malakani yutalibanihi. بتصحيح العمل ونفسه تطالبه بهواها وإبليس يطالبه بالفحشاء والمنكر والملك الموت يطالبه بقبض الروح وعياله يطالبونه بالنفقة فكيف أصبح مروزي he said that I came to Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى on one occasion and I asked him كيف أصبحت all of us just woke up this morning, walillahi alhamd. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for waking us up. The moment your eyes open in the morning, the first thing that should come out of your mouth is alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. 
All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us life after our death and to him is our return. Marwazi, he said, I went to Imam Ahmed and I asked him, Kayf asbahta? How did you wake up this morning? And Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Kayf asbaha man rabbuhu yutalibuhu bil fara'ib? How does any man wake up in the morning with a Lord that is requesting that he establishes the things that he made obligatory upon him? And his prophet is requesting that he establish his sunnah or practice his sunnah. And the two angels on his right and the other one on his left is requesting that he correct his deeds before they jot it down. He said, And his soul is calling it to follow his lower impulses and desires. And Iblis is requesting that he do imprudent deeds or evil deeds, foul and evil deeds, acts of disobedience. He said, And the angel of death is just waiting for the moment to give the call to be given the call to snatch his soul and his own family is requesting that they feed him and provide for them how does anyone wake up with all of these responsibilities on this on this shoulder you have a lord that is requesting this from you you have a prophet that is requesting this from you you have your own soul that is requesting this from you you have you know, the angels on your right and on your left requesting this from you. You have the angel of death waiting for you, waiting to snatch your soul at any moment. You have Iblis who is requesting that you do this. All of these responsibilities upon yourself. Successful people hold themselves accountable in order to achieve the goals that they set for themselves. No one who is a success in life has ever achieved that success except by holding themselves accountable. The person who just allows himself to go in life without any accountability, without any self-accountability is the type of person that will never be successful because you are controlled by outside forces, by your desires, by other people, by peer pressure, by social standards, by this, by that. You're controlled, but a person who controls himself is free to do as he pleases. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. وسلم تسليما كثيرا واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته